Look at this spot here, there's absolute magic. I was out here till 11.30 last night and uh, it's just, um, it's much better than sitting home watching TV. Well, uh, I'm not gonna do a Rex Hunt and kiss this guy goodbye, but uh, he goes. I'm on the way out to the western side of Bruxton Park to set some traps into one of the creeks and this is the view back towards the coast. Right, so I thought I'd just um, pop in the shed here and have a chat about collecting your own fish and just cover some of the um, not so interesting points I guess. Um, legislation and um, licensing. You need to check with your own state, your own country as to collecting in your area. Um, I've got a recreational fishing license as well as from fisheries, I've got a section 37A aquarium collection permit for my private aquarium. So I can go out and collect fish um, for to bring back for my own tanks, not to sell, this is not for a business. I wouldn't have one of those permits if I didn't have big tanks. There's a fee involved with it and um, there's expense that goes with it. So there's I've got my snorkeling gear, I've got my, uh, my nets, there's repairs to that, my fishing tackle, um, my fuel, my travel, my time. So if I just had a small tank, a six foot tank, a four foot tank, a three foot tank, and um, I want some marine fish or freshwater fish, I certainly wouldn't go and get a aquarium collection permit. Um, it's be much, much cheaper to go down to the aquarium store and, uh, and purchase fish. I picked up these two bait traps from Big W, they're about $8 each. And um, I've also got some, uh, some cord just to tie them up to the bridge to make it easy to pull them out and some dry cat food to use as bait. One thing that's important to realize is that you need to put a um, identification card on each bait trap. And uh, that card comes with the actual bait trap. And it just has your, your details, your license, and I'll put a little note there at the bottom for anybody who wants to mess with a trap just to try and be respectful. So the way these bait traps work is that there's a bait pocket which is suspended inside the trap. In this case here, I've just put dry cat food inside this bait pocket. Uh, you could also use bread. I've heard of people using bread and Vegemite. Um, I wouldn't use anything like um, uh, wet tinned cat food because that would just disintegrate. It needs to hold together inside that bait pocket. And as the little particles of that bait float down and into the water, the fish that come from below the trap are attracted and they're attracted through this funnel. They're going through that opening trying to find the actual bait. There's another funnel on this side, for fish that approach in the bait from this end. And once inside the trap, the fish not being particularly clever, if they try and exit, you can see the funnel there from side on, if they try and exit, they do so uh, and usually get caught up against this inward funnel and then track down to the corners down here. This zipper on top is there to you to, for you to access the fish once you've collected them. Um, I tend to unzip that, turn the trap upside down, shake them into a bucket. And of course it comes with a rope, the label, and I have actually attached a longer piece of cord. I didn't want to spook the fish by having the label right down at the trap, but I also don't actually want to have the label right up at the bridge because that to me would encourage people to come and have a sticky beak, pull the trap out and, um, and ruin it for me. I'm dropping this trap down in an area which is quite close to some sticks and some logs and some and some rocks. See it blends in very, very well. Uh, you might be able to see that label sticking up a bit higher out of the water, so not to scare the fish. And I'll just tuck this uh, this cord in in an inconspicuous area near the bridge, so it's not so obvious to trap. So this is a very typical creek crossing that we'd see close to Coffs Harbour. We are on the western side of Bruxner Park, or Sealy Lookout. We've gone through the rainforesty area and we've popped out into the sort of more open eucalypt area. And that's where we tend to find these deeper creeks. Species of fish I would expect to find in this freshwater would be crimson spot rainbows. They tend to like the slightly deeper water, more country style creeks, as well as 
the ornate rainbow fish, which is Radnus centris ornatus. There should be plenty of gudgeons, empire gudgeons, striped gudgeons. So this guy's a striped gudgeon. They actually grow quite large, probably about 15, 20 centimetres long. Righto, so the traps are set. About an hour or so, we'll come back out and we'll see what the result is. So I've given it about, about an hour and a half and uh, I've come back to see what's in the traps that we set in the creek. Little tip, make sure you put water in the bucket first before you pull your traps up because we don't want the fish flopping around in the trap whilst you dick around trying to get the water. Well, this was a pretty terrible start to uh, rainbow fish collecting. Um, zero rainbow fish collected in the traps. The traps have been here about an hour and a half. Four gudgeons. Please, please make sure that you actually study all the little nooks and crannies inside just for any shrimp or fish that have been overlooked. It's a bit horrible to think that they'll be drying up and dying inside a trap that you thought was otherwise empty. Right, so I think the reason, well, I think that part of the reason why I received no rainbow fish or caught no rainbow fish in those traps was just bait choice, maybe. Um, the whisk gets, they're hard, takes a long time for them to soften. You get a bit of a burly trail after a while, but bread might be a bit more of an immediate uh, attractant. So I've pulled these two baits in, these traps in, and um, we will try again with bread. Really, really pretty place. And uh, got these lovely riffle rapid zones, the shallow water and the pebbles and cobbles, and these deeper, deeper areas of the river. Across the other side there of the bridge, where it's sort of a little eddy area, that little bay, is um, where I was catching the rainbow fish last night. And uh, over here, in this shallow pebbly area, is where I was collecting the Pacific blue eyes. And that bay down there, that shallow area there near the grass is where the eagles were chasing the prawns. And this little little bay on that side of the bridge was where I was collecting most of those rainbow fish. So anyway, enough of the Araya River at daytime. Let's go back 18 hours and I'll show you how to collect some rainbow fish at night. The Araya River. We've made it across the bridge in the Caramba and down to the Araya River. Right, so the old bait traps didn't quite work last time we uh, set out to catch some rainbow fish. Um, rest assured, it actually is a good method. Uh, I think maybe the bait choice and maybe just selection or time of day might have, might have influenced that. But I'm going to uh, try and see if we can record another method of collecting rainbow fish, and that is by um, using a, a dip or a scoop net at night time. Okay, so collecting gear. Obviously, I've got my, uh, my dip net. I have extended the handle a little bit with some uh, aluminium tube and a couple of screws i've got my own bucket what i've actually done is i've actually drilled a hole in the lid of the bucket and um, i've put my air pump which can actually pump air through into an air stone in the bucket um, a little bit of salt also helps in the bucket sometimes when you're bringing home freshwater fish and uh, it just helps to prevent some of the the fin or the skin damage i think we've probably got ourselves some um, sort of quiet waters over there tucked in near the bank, just on that side where the grass is. We might just go and try our luck, just underneath the bridge over that side. And we are right there. Couldn't spot rainbow fish. So, uh, see how that kind of just hovers in the still waters? And um, I guess the light must sort of stun it, blind it somewhat. It'll make it a lot easier to scoop. Okay. It's a rainbow fish. So you almost need to train your eye a little bit actually into seeing these guys. See that large one that's smack bang in the middle of the light. And uh, I almost missed him. And uh, As you look closely, you'll start to see the smaller ones. They're actually closer in the shallow water. Uh, a little hint when you're filling up your bucket, uh, especially with rainbow fish, is don't fill it up too high because they're jumpers. So having that extra height um, of space before the rim means that the rainbow fish stay in rather than jumping out all the time. Uh, that's especially so if you're taking the lid on and off because it goes off, head door John, rainbow fish jumps. Oh, he's fast, he got out of the way. There's another one. Right there. So I'm coming up from underneath. 
the aim of coming up in front of where he goes, so he comes up into the net. Oh, I might just turn off this uh, air pump to show you guys the uh, fish that I've got in the bucket so far. So I'll sort of align this so the head torch is not in the way. And you can see I've got oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, nine, ten crimson spot rainbow fish there. There's some pretty good size ones there. You can see the size of the air stone. So they're actually quite a pretty fish. They're a subtle fish. They've got um, some blue, some red lines, some, some yellow fins, and of course a red spot just behind the gill plate. It's nice eels. Yeah, oh, there was another one. Cruising around inside the darkness looking for worms and snails and fish that might just be holed up for the night. So that's Tandanus Tandanus. So here I am looking for, for rainbow fish and I'm watching these little um <laughs> that little guy just gave it away. I'm watching these um these Australian smelt and right in front of me is a short neck turtle. Got it. There we go. I'll just set up here and I'll um see if we can get him cleaned up and I'll show you a bit more about him. Let me do uh Macquarie Eye, I think is the right way of saying it, but on the east coast, as opposed to over in the, um, the western side of the Great Dividing Range, the Macquarie type of short neck turtle is sort of divided into all sorts of subspecies up and down, depending upon the locality and the river they're found from. And uh, this guy here, funnily enough, I know it's actually a boy because if I show you the underside, oh, he's tucked his tail in nice and short. But that tail in males is long and fat. See that? Long and fat, whereas in females that tail is short. So we know that this very handsome little turtle is a boy. Here he goes. Okay, so these are Australian smelt, these guys here. And uh, they tend to never stay still at night time in the water column. They're always moving a little bit. See how much skinny they are, and um, they've got those bright silver sides, like I showed you before. They're the anchovies of the marine of the freshwater world, I guess you'd say. So, we're gonna let this guy go. Bring the camera down. Let's see if you can actually distinguish the difference between Australian smelt and Pacific blue eyes. So, those long, skinny ones. Are the Australian smelt? The yellowish tone ones are Pacific blue eyes. In Australia, we call them blue eyes. I think overseas, you guys tend to call them rainbow fish as well. You guys have been used to Sudanugal for the Cardus, which is from New Guinea, I think. Not so common here in Australia. But the East Coast Pacific blue eye is practically in every backyard native pond out there because they don't tend to eat the frog's eggs. So the Pacific blue eye, in natural sunlight, you'll see his bright blue eye. You can almost see it there. And the males have these lovely sort of golden fins they extend to uh, show off to the girls. Righto, so that's collecting rainbow fish by head torch at night in the Arara River at Karamba, just outside Coffs Harbour. Got, I haven't accounted, but probably about a dozen or so crimson spot rainbow fish and pacific blue eyes top tips for collecting rainbow fish at night is to use a good head torch and uh narrow the beam turn the beam up high to kind of stun the fish a little bit um get an extension pole on your dip net that allows you a much greater reach and when you're actually going out slow and steady underneath the fish Go out beyond a little bit where you think the fish is and then come up and back. And that way as the fish darts away from you, it'll dart into the upcoming and backcoming net. Um, you can get quite a rhythm up after a while. Ah, air stone. So, massive difference if you get yourself a battery powered air pump with an airline and an air stone. And I just drilled a small hole into the top of the bucket lid. Um, not a tight fit. Air goes in, air must come out, otherwise the air pump stops working. So um, a loose fit, but that 
that bubbling of oxygen and air has made a massive difference to um, the result of live fish when I get home. In the past, I'd come out here on a hot sunny day, it'd be beautiful, the family were having a picnic, they'd be swimming, I'd be collecting fish, having a great time. But the water's heating up in the bucket all the time, despite the fact that um, you're trying to refresh that water in the bucket um, frequently, put it in the shade, that kind of thing, sometimes I would, I, I, I would, I would lose some fish. And I found by using a, um, an air pump and an air stone, and certainly collecting at night, the oxygen level in the water is better, the water's cooler, the fish transport really well, and you don't get any losses. And the other thing you can possibly do in a bucket of that size, which is about 20 litres, is put a teaspoon of salt in there. Hopefully I can get some footage of this beautiful place, uh, the Arara River, to put onto this uh, video so you can see what it's like actually during daytime. Interestingly enough, the Arara River is one that actually flows westwards before turning and joining the Clarence River up near Grafton and then exiting out to sea. And uh, when I get home, um, we can have a little uh, tank set up and we can show you what fish we've collected. I didn't tonight. actually feel like acclimating the fish last night. Uh, it was about 11.30 when I got home. But I wanted to make sure that the fish that were kept in the bucket not only had oxygen, they also had a means of preventing um, uh, ammonia buildup. So what I actually did was I went to the sump in the turtle tank and pulled out a sponge filter, a seasoned sponge filter I'd had there for quite some time. And I had it there for the sole purpose of maintaining the bacteria on that sponge for occurrences like this. I could hook it up to this battery powered air pump I had going already. And that way I wouldn't have any um, toxic ammonia building up in the bucket. In saying that, I did have four unfortunate little losses here, three of which were Australian smelt, which I must have mistakenly put in the bucket thinking they were Pacific blue eye and one Pacific blue eye. And this is very unfortunate, um, but waste not here. These guys will go as Trevally food in the big marine tank. All right, so here's some close-up footage of the fish I brought back last night. Big guy right at the very front is a male crimson spot rainbow fish. I can tell it's a male just from the coloration. There's nice yellow fins with some red edges, and they also develop uh, more of a wedge-shaped body. The female crimson spot rainbow fish is actually much more... Um, is fuller at the front, but tends to taper fairly quickly. There's a female just up behind the male there. Still had that red dot on the gill plate, but um, don't develop the nice wedge-shaped body, nor the actual coloration on the fins. The smaller fish that are sort of darting around the rainbow fish are Pacific blue eyes. There's a male right in front at the moment, a little bit out of focus. They actually develop the more triangular elongated fins, which they use to show off to the females. And they're actually quite stunning when you see them outside in a pond or a nice planted tank. The females themselves are more, more plain in coloration. The fins are fairly triangular and, and short triangular, um, but they still do have the nice blue eye. There's a, a full little tank shot of the fish we collected last night. This is a little 30 centimetre long tank. So you can see in there I've probably got maybe about a dozen Crimson Spot Rainbow fish. A nice little cluster of uh, Pacific Blue Eyes, I'd say probably about 20 or so. And I do unfortunately have some uh, Australian smelt, which I've mistakenly put in there. Um, a little macrobrachium shrimp coming through the front. And uh, I think it's a nice little, um, nice little collection from last night. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. If you've got any questions regarding that video, pop them down in the comment section below and I'll get onto those as soon as I can. And if you're into um, the greater side of aquarium keeping from an Australian perspective, check out my channel and subscribe.